Here we go with week six. With only two games last week, we kept it under 30 minutes. The things that were messing up seem to be the real simple things, the complicated things we have down. We need to focus on getting the simple things correct and not make our coaches waste challenges because we screw up the simple things. As always, let's start the week off with some belt plays. I think I got six plays dealing with the defensive belt. Here we go. On this play, the goal line is the belt. Our back judge is telling the linebacker, put your toes on the line. The goal line is the belt. Coaches have been doing a really good job training their players. When the goal line is the belt, you got to have a set of toes on the line. Here the back judge helps this backer into a legal formation. Nice job. This is a better shot of what we mean. Coaches, you've been doing a real good job with the players. When the goal line is the belt, basically... It's like having an extra lineman up there. He needs to have his toes on the line, at least one set. He doesn't need both feet up there, but you can see his toes are on the belt. Per rule, we need one DB aligned at the back of the belt. Player, I think it's 13 here, is in proper alignment. That's exactly what we want. Again, it looks like Basically, you have a up lineman down there, but as long as his toes are on the line, one set of toes, we're good. We know the goal line is the belt. Toes on the line. Legal formation. Here's a good call. Unfortunately, I can't let the video run because the camera is terrible. But this defender was lined up at the 20 at the snap. And we know the ball is snapped here. At the 16, we know the belt is here, so this was a correct call. He was inside the belt. There was no receiver in motion coming towards him. He was unaligned. He was inside the belt by a yard. Correct call. On this play, our receiver is going to move laterally across the formation. The defender is going to stay with him or attempt to stay with him. Yet we have a flag down for... This defender being inside the belt, not aligned, getting caught in between two receivers, which we've talked about on many training videos. This is not getting caught in between two receivers. Our defender here is attempting to move laterally, and we haven't discussed it this year, but we have in the past. Keep in mind, the offense cannot use this type of crossing motion as they do here in an attempt to create a foul for not mirroring. This defender is making good effort to stay with him. He's not caught in between any receivers. We should not have a flag down here. When you see this type of crossing motion, the defense is going to be hard-pressed to be flagged for a foul here. Don't let the offense use this kind of crossing formation in an attempt to create a foul. This is an incorrect call. On this play, we're at fourth and two or less. So it's about fourth and one. That means the belt is about the nine-yard line. Look at our umpire. He's helping the backers align themselves at the belt. The belt shortens here to about the nine. So these two linebackers are both aligned at the back of the belt legally. Watch what happens with the left side linebacker. And remember this, uh, coaches. He's moving. But remember where our belt is here. It's about right here. So this linebacker, he moves off the belt. He can be anywhere he wants behind that belt. He does not need to be aligned because the belt is right here, and he's behind it. We do not have a five-yard belt here. The belt is two yards, so this linebacker does not need to be aligned with any receiver when he's moving out of position here. So correct, no call. The point is, coaches, remember, when the belt reduces in fourth and two or less, or any time we are snapped inside the five going in and the belt reduces to the goal line, the linebacker's responsibilities for mirroring are also shortened. Five yards here becomes a two-yard belt. If we're snapped at the four, it's a four-yard belt. So remember, our linebacker's here when the belt is shortened. He can move around behind the belt. He does not have to be aligned. 
Here, it's fourth down and two or less. In fact, it's fourth and one. Look at our umpire, preventive officiate, telling the linebackers, the belt is the 20. Get your toes up on the line. This is one of these situations, coaches, where one of your DBs needs to have his foot up on that line, and finally the right side backer gets his toes on the line. Great job of preventive officiating by our umpire. Players, remember, fourth and two or less, the belt shrinks to the line to gain. Get some toes up on the line. Let's watch the left guard on this play. Does this jump out at you as a false start? It certainly does. That is a foul. Yet we don't have a flag down. We forced the coach to waste a challenge because we missed this easy one. That jumps out at you. That is a false start. Now, since we did go to replay, we didn't waste too much time on that. We did not have to go frame by frame to see it. Just let it run. That's a false start. We should have looked at it one time. This is a false start. The crew correctly reversed it and created a false start and called back this touchdown. But we should not have made the coach waste the challenge on a play as simple as this. That is easy. False start. Replay would confirm this as a false start. Clearly, he's about a yard and a half beyond the line of scrimmage at the snap. It jumps out at you. We want this shut down, and we get a flag, and we shut it down. Now, if we went frame by frame, let's stop it at the snap. Right here is the snap, right there, and this player is more than a yard downfield. That jumps out at you. That is a correct call. Next up, three plays dealing with illegal contact. Let's take a look. Illegal contact. Let's first look at our keys. H is here. Key set at the snap. Line judge is here. Back judge is here. We have no alignment here at all, so there can be no contact, and certainly not contact downfield. Where's our illegal contact line? Umpire sitting at six, which is a healthy five. We're going to have contact about nine, ten yards downfield right there. Back judges on his key. Remember what we say, about two seconds, right? You're going to see that foul. One, one thousand, two. There's the foul. There's the flag. We have a touchdown. We have the back judge in perfect position, set up on the goal line. He sees it. He can hold that flag for a second. Hey, we got a touchdown. I can let this go. Absolutely not. We want the flag every time because it could be an offset. So good focus by the back judge, sees the illegal contact about 10 yards downfield. He's set up on the goal line, puts a flag in a quiet area, throws it, and continues to officiate the play. Beautiful. Two-point conversion at the end of the game. The ball snapped at the six. Therefore, we know the healthy five is just inside the goal line. Watch when the contact starts on the receiver. It's initially at the healthy five. But the contact continues against the wall into the end zone. And the key here, which is going to turn this, which should turn this into DPI, is when we see the defender, right now the defender, he's got his back to the ball. He is not playing the ball at all. In the last second, he hooks the receiver. Bells and whistles should be going up when we have a defender not playing the ball. He never looks back to the ball. And he keeps the receiver from being able to come back to the ball by hooking the receiver. We've got to have a flag down here. Minimally, illegal contact. The goal line is the max of the healthy five because we're snapped at the six. So there's contact. We can let that go. But when the contact continues into the end zone, defender not playing the ball, we've got to have a flag down on this. Here's a similar play to the last one. Let's watch the action on this receiver here. Ball snapped at the 7. What do we know? The ICT line, the healthy 5 is going to be around the 2. This contact occurs well beyond the healthy 5. It starts in the end zone. and We know the healthy 5 was about the 2-yard line. Defender's not playing the ball. Ball's up. We're going to turn this into pass interference. Good call. we got to have it. And the crew correctly enforced this. We've got... DPI in the end zone will bring that ball out to the two-yard line for the automatic first down. And we've got, watch the action on the quarterback here. Good judgment by the referee passing on this flop. Quarterback taking a drop there. That's a big nothing. Contact occurs a split second after the ball's away. So good job not fouling the flop there. Next up, six illegal defenses. 
Rule 85A2 requires that the snap there must be three defensive linemen in a three or four point stance on the line of scrimmage. Let's watch our nose. A four point stance is okay. Here he jumps, but at the time of the snap he's back down. We're going to see him jump. Let me see if I can get in a little closer for you. He's going to jump right there. You'd think we have a foul, but he's now back down on the ground in a four point stance. And then we have the snap. So if replay challenged this, we did have a flag down. This would be reversed. He's up, the ball has not been snapped, and he's back down at the snap. Four-point stance is legal. At the snap, he's up, and he's back down. So replay would reverse this if this play was challenged. We had a flag down for defender not down in his stance. At the snap, he's up, and he jumps right back down into a four-point stance. Then the snap occurs. This is legal. Correct call here for defender not down in his stance at the snap. He's up and the ball has not been snapped. Correct call. If this play was challenged by the defense, go frame by frame, which we can do on this foul. He's up. He's out of his stance. The ball has not been snapped. That's how quick the replay challenge should take. He's out of his stance. He's out of his stance, and the ball is snapped. We can go frame by frame to confirm this foul. Out of his stance, the ball has yet to be snapped. Now it's snapped. The call would be confirmed. If this one doesn't jump out at you, I don't know what does. Linebacker not stationary at the snap, doing a little pirouette. Correct call. Referees, the correct announcement on this foul is linebacker not stationary at the snap. It's not linebacker moving forward at the snap. Let's announce linebacker not stationary at the snap. This is a correct call. A couple of things to remind you on this play. First, we're early in the game. This might even be Team A's first series. We understand warning early, but that defensive end is way outside, shoulder to shoulder. Back, should, back judge should get a look at that. Maybe the umpire sliding over, pre-snap getting a look. We've got to have these checks early. That is not a warning. That is a foul. And then watch the umpire get the face mask right there with the nose. Good job getting that, seeing that. Grabs The nose grabs the center's head and just pulls it and swings it around. Don't see that too often. Good focus by the umpire. A couple of plays later, umpire decides to check him in. And remember what we said, though, over the years, when you're preventive officiating, don't preventive officiate yourself right out of the play. So just talk to him after the play. We appreciate the effort here. But remember, don't get yourself taken out of position trying to help these guys line up. Next three plays dealing with mechanics. Let's take a look. Here we have a loose ball. The officials will kill the clock, but nobody signals direction. As soon as we know direction, we need somebody pointing. I know we've killed the clock. Signals change of possession. Let's have a point. Nice job by the back judge here. Look at him like a like a bullet coming in here, ready to clean up the nonsense. Nice job. Watch the mechanics by our wing here, our line judge, inside the 10. He's got to head to the goal line. Watch the extra mechanic there. He punches back. He's selling what he has. Even from that angle, he's got a backwards pass. So if there's any issues, we can just go to the line judge. Hey, he's punching back, coach. That is a backwards pass. That is a loose ball if, in fact, it went loose. So remember, we understand we have a hole in our mechanics on the line of scrimmage here because both wings are headed to the goal line. In any event, our wing here can still make that judgment call here and does. Gives us a little help if we need it. He's got a punch back. Nice job. On this play, the two wings are going to exhibit very good judgment as the ball is caught just over the goal line and the receiver is forced back into the field of play. But we can see, there we got, we got a touchdown there. 
the two wings right here are going to make some eye contact, a little head nod, and they both go up signaling touchdown. So good mechanics, good communication. If we went to replay, let me go back here, replay, we can frame by frame this to see the catch. We got a catch, he's in the end zone, he's broken the plane, that's good. What did the eagle eye evaluator see on this play also? We've got an illegal defense. Right there, heels on the line, not toes. Therefore, that linebacker is inside the belt illegally at the snap. We'd want a flag down for a linebacker illegally inside the belt. An over-the-wall catch is sometimes difficult to rule upon because the official has to cover a lot of ground to get to the wall and then to get over the wall. So players, if you make a catch on the other side of the wall, help the officials out. Show them the ball. Officials, hustle over to the spot of the catch. Jump up if you have to. Get a look and signal quickly. Here's a couple of over-the-wall catch plays. Tell you what, this fourth angle camera is going to be the death of me. I hate it. But first, let's look at our back judge. He's setting the belt at the goal line, telling the players where the belt is. Well-coached players got their toes on the line. We're going to have an over-the-wall catch. This receiver over in this corner. Watch the hustle by our headlinesman and our back judge to get over there to rule on the play. Got to get over there quick. As soon as you see it, it's got to be sold. Incomplete pass. Players, when you make those type catches, if it is a catch, show us the ball as quick as you can. Great job by both officials hustling over to see what needs to be seen. And three plays later, similar play, over the wall catch. This time it's a touchdown. Our H and our back judge hustling over to see and make the call. This is one of those type plays where we want an instant decision. By our head linesman here, he's the first one in. Sees the ball, sees possession over the wall, and signals immediately there can be no delay. Excellent work. Next, we'll take a look at five reminder plays. We talked about this last week, and here we go again. Opening kickoff. You've got to be ready. The runner gets flipped upside down, lands, and the ball comes out. You can see our head linesman coming over here, selling this strong. And if this play had been challenged, this play would be confirmed. But we talked about it last week. 100% focus at the start of the game. He's flipped over. He's down. And the ball pops out. Well done by the H. Great job. Here's the end of a free kick. Watch our referee. Look at the focus. You might think, well, ball has gone into the stands. The play is over. But we've got the action right here. The kicking team player's got a grasp, big grasp of the face mask, and our referee flags it. Point is, play's not over till the players separate. Look, referee's killing the clock. Okay, play's over. Let's get ready. Let's spot that ball. We've got that action between the two players. A big old face mask. Great call. Good focus by the referee. Remember, the play is not over until the players separate. Number four here plays professional football in his other professional sports. He's a volleyball setter. This is a good reminder here that you're going to see him bat the ball. It's more like a volleyball set right there. But he bats the ball laterally or almost backwards here. So this is not a foul. If that ball is batted forward, we'd want to flag down. But here, this uh, is like a volleyball set. It's laterally. We would not reverse this. We can't tell. It's good enough that this is laterally or backwards. Therefore, good job by the crew not flagging this for an illegal forward bat. Here's a rules reminder. We don't see it too often. I can't recall ever seeing it, but it's rule 84B5, which states that the players in motion may not be the lead blocker for a running play inside the alley. And you can see on this play, first we do have a motion receiver. He receives a handoff, so he's not a lead blocker. But what happens if that quarterback pulls that ball out? That motion receiver is now the lead blocker on a play inside the alley, and we'd want to have a flag down. The way to think about it, the reason for this rule is teams used to 
line up maybe a three or four hundred pound running back, he'd get up a head of steam into the box and just clear out the inside, just obliterating people. So the rule was put in place, 8-4-B-5, the motion receiver may not be the lead blocker for a running play inside the alley. And here, if the quarterback pulled the ball out and kept it, we'd want to flag down. We don't see it too often, just keep that in the back of your head. Rules reminder, 7-6-C. All walls are out of bounds for any forward pass. The ball is dead and the play shall be blown dead immediately. Any time a forward pass strikes any wall. Here the crew allowed the play to continue as an interception. Fortunately, they got bailed out by a correct illegal defense call. Just remember the rule, 7-6-C. The wall is treated as the ground. When a forward pass bounces off that wall, let's kill it. We need to work on getting 100% of the safety fouls and get them correct. Let's take a look at three safety plays from last week. On this play, I want you to watch the nose. He's going to put his hands into the center's face two times. And the second time, we're going to have sustained contact. This is a safety issue. We need to get a flag on the ground. Umpire is looking right at that. We get this flag, the offense gets an automatic first down. Sustained contact, looking right in there. We can't miss these safety fouls. Let's protect the quarterback. The defender here is going to have a clear view of the left-handed quarterback. He knows when the ball is away, yet he still takes a couple of steps and delivers a punishing blow to the quarterback's back. Referee right where he needs to be, puts the flag in a quiet area, correct call for roughing the passer. Nice job protecting the quarterback. Coach, arm's length. I know your arms are not five or six feet long. Let's get closer to the wall. On this play, we would support a call for roughing the passer. It isn't a real big hit, but it is late. It does knock the quarterback down, and this is early in the game, so it's best to call this stuff early in the game to stop this kind of stuff from happening later. We can get control of this right now with the flag. Again, this is in the first quarter. It's late. It's unnecessary. We want a flag on this. Command decision is a special rule in the IFL. Last week, we had a really good, well-thought-out command decision made by a referee when he had to deal with a replay issue that was kind of not covered under our rules. The decision was appropriate. Let's take a look. Common sense here by our referee. Look at our two players on the outside at the end of the play. The defensive coach challenged that the right offensive guard threw a punch. So when the play went to review, the defensive coach was correct. The right offensive guard threw a punch. But why did he throw the punch? It was in retaliation for the defensive player's punch. So the command decision was made to not disqualify either of the two players, and we were not going to create a foul here. And I think you all understand why that was a good decision. And I guess we could say that the approved ruling as we move forward here. If we've got a coach challenging a punch, as he does here, and it turns out the punch was in retaliation for his player's punch, we are not going to disqualify the players, and we are certainly not going to create a foul to the disadvantage of the other team. If this is safety-type action in the immediate action, like it is here, I'm just going to wave it off and let the play stand. Very, very good job using the command decision function of our rules by the referee here, and I think he made a good decision. If we have a similar play in the future like this, do the same thing. There's the retaliatory punch by the offense. Yeah, he threw it. Yeah, he threw it. But why did he throw it? The end through the first one. Great decision by a referee. And that concludes week six. 
for week seven. We've only got one game coming up on Saturday night. That's five officials that will be in a pressure cooker. It is time, gentlemen, to step up to the plate and perform because all eyes will be upon you this Saturday night. I'll talk to you next week.